Let's have a look at section 4.2, which continues our look at direct proof and counterexample. Um, this section focuses on the rational numbers. And so what you'll see on the exercises from section 4.2 is that typically in writing a proof, you'll need to use the definition of rational. And let's talk about that right now. Um, so a real number is rational if and only if it can be expressed as a quotient of two integers with a non-zero denominator. And a real number that's not rational is called irrational. Okay, here we have a restatement of that uh, using variables for the two integers. Now, oftentimes we may encounter rational numbers that are not necessarily expressed in that form. Okay, and notice that the definition says can be expressed. Um, that doesn't mean that it will, that will always be the case um, every time we see a rational number written. So two examples I have here are 5, which we can write as 5 over 1, and 0 0.719, which we could write as 719 over 1,000. So um, we could generalize that. So really any integer could be written as that integer over 1, right? And any terminating decimal could be written as an integer over some power of 10 um, before we put it in lowest terms if, um, if it's not already. Um, so integers are rational. Terminating decimals are rational. And we can go further than that. And to do so, let's look at another example. Uh, let's look at the repeating decimal 0 0.512, 512, 512, and so on. Um, notice that the, the repeating portion of this is three decimal places long. So it's 512, 512, 512. If we were to multiply that by 1,000, we would move the decimal point over three places. And notice that if we were to do that, then what follows the decimal point would look the same as our original x there. So we've got 512 point 512, 512, 512. Okay, so what follows the decimal point is the same for both x and 1000x. So if we were to subtract x from 1000x, everything after the decimal point would cancel out. So we can say 1000x minus x is simply 512. But another way to say that is 999x is 512, we isolate x, we get x is 512 over 999, and that shows that x is rational. Now we could do the same thing anytime we have a repeating decimal. Um, now what power of 10 we multiply by is going to depend on how long the repeating section is. right? So here it was three decimal places, so we multiply by 1,000. Uh, but we may need to adjust that, you know, one way or the other, depending on whether we have a shorter portion or a longer portion that's repeating. Okay, but in any case, that technique is going to work. So, so we said integers are rational, terminating decimals are rational, and repeating decimals are rational. Uh, but not all real numbers are rational, okay? Um, you, if I asked you to give me an example, perhaps the first one that, that you're familiar with is that pi is irrational, okay? The decimal expansion for pi is, is not terminating and it's not repeating. Um, and there are certainly other um, well-known examples like the square root of 2, square root of 3, uh, e, if you're familiar with the, the number E, um, those are all examples of irrational numbers.
Okay, I want to talk about one additional concept here in this video, which is the zero product property. The zero product property simply says that if neither of two real numbers is zero, their product is also not zero. Okay. This is something that you may have seen before, um, maybe a, a variation on this. Sometimes this is stated in the contrapositive form of what I have here, um, so that if the product is zero, then one of the two real numbers is zero. Um, that is used, or a place that you may have seen that is in an algebra course because it's used when you're um, using factoring to solve an equation. Okay, um, you factor, and if, if you've got one side equal to zero, then one of the factors must be zero. Here we're going to use it in a different way. Uh, we're going to use this uh, in writing proofs about rational numbers because remember it's important that our denominator be non-zero. So if we're trying to show that some quantity is rational, we need to show that it's an integer divided by an integer or that it can be expressed as an integer over an integer with a non-zero denominator. And the zero product property can come in handy for showing um, that a denominator is non-zero if it's a product of two things that we know are non-zero real numbers. Okay, you'll see that come up in an example in a separate video. Um, that's all for this particular video. Hope you found it helpful. The next topic, next section we cover, continues direct proof and counterexample, but with a focus on divisibility. So we'll get some new uh, definitions there. Okay, see you in that next video.